we can agree that sometimes saving money is all about not making costly mistakes, right? And when it comes to breeding your mare, I think it's expensive enough as it is without making some of those. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you four things that people sometimes do that ends up costing them lots of money. And then all you have to do is not do them. Have you ever come back from the store and discovered, hmm, you forgot something? How about going to the feed store and they tell you that they're out of that particular feed you wanted to get, so you need to get it the next day? It's a little bit the problem that we have with our mare. When we end up breeding over multiple cycle, we're not efficient. We end up spending way more money than we should. How do we make sure that our mare settles the first time so we don't have to keep doing this over and over again? The last time I bred to an unproven stallion, it ended up costing me two breeding cycle, plus a bunch of diagnostic I ran on my mare after because she was not catching and she didn't need it. She was not the problem. He didn't ship very well. So here's what I've learned in 20 years of breeding horses by AI with ship semen. Make sure you get a fertile stallion, one that has a couple of full crop on the ground further away than 200 kilometers because that'll tell you that their semen ships well. Second of all, find a reputable stud owner, meaning one that is completely transparent about their stallion, their fertility, that would be able to give you some references of other mare owner that had success using their stud, because that will give you some comfort and some insurance that at least when it comes to the stallion semen, you're working with a quantity that is of quality. So make sure at least the stallion is proven, working with a good stud owner that knows their business, and you're probably on your way to a good success. The reality is that mare have more issues that can affect the fertility than stallion. That's why it's a really good idea to get your mare a good repro exam early in the season to determine what could be, you know, causing you problem down the road, if anything. So a good repro exam will make sure that her reproduction confirmation is correct and not giving you any grief. They will also check whether or not she's breeding sound and that should include a uterine culture. That's to make sure she has no infection in her uterus. By the way, contrary to other mammals, mares can have a raging uterine infection and have no outward sign. There's no temperature, she doesn't feel comfortable, it is not life-threatening. So there is no way to tell from just looking at your mare whether or not she has an infection. So if your vet says, I don't think she needs a culture, that's a red flag. More about that later. But wait, you say, I know my mare is breeding sound. She's already had a foal. Well, things could have changed. For one thing, she could have cervical scarring from that previous birth. Maybe her conformation has changed because of age. And finally, she could still have a uterine infection. So you need to clear that up, no matter if your mare is a maiden or she's had a few foals before. Sure, getting a clean mare at the beginning of this season might end up costing you some money up front, but it will save you thousands in the long run. So you're still with me? If you like this type of conversation on the practical and scientific and sometimes emotional aspect of breeding horses, well, you're in the right channel because that's pretty much all I talk about. So come along if you like and hit the subscribe button. So we talked about the stallion and we talked about the mare, uh, but there's a third factor that comes into play that you need to consider. You remember this video? It turned out to be a video for um, an insurance company and they were urging you to get good expert advice. The, vet, the veterinarian that you're working with is your expert in this situation. You need to make sure that they have the knowledge and the experience to help you beyond the basics. What I mean by that is that when vets go to school, they have lots of things to learn and they might not specialize in repro work. So you should ask them, how comfortable are they with working on reproduction? And if they are not comfortable, do they have somebody to recommend? Because getting expert advice will certainly help you out and will, especially if something was to come up that's a little bit out of the ordinary, they would know what to do. A knowledge and expertise is not the only thing. So I was working with a repro specialist one year and my mare was proving to be very difficult to, to get in full. So at one point I recommended and I said, listen, we've done a few things. I think we should do a culture and make sure that she is still clean because there's no reason for her not to be catching. To which she replied, I don't think that's necessary, which I thought was a bit odd. Oh, and newsflash, the mare did have an infection. And once we cleared that up, she got pregnant. And a little bit later on that day, I heard him talking to another client and explaining to them that their mare had stopped cycling and that she was probably done for the year. Problem was that it was the middle of July, so that was probably not the case. This vet had the expertise and had the knowledge, but 
what I think was happening here, he didn't have the capacity. He was basically too busy to take on, but the most simple of breeding job. He was so busy. He had so many clients. He just didn't have the time to spend on more difficult case. So you need all three. You need a vet that has the experience, that has the knowledge, and that has the capacity for your mare. So in considering whether the vet is the right fit for what I need and to determine whether or not they have the experience and the knowledge and the capacity, I'm going to be listening to a couple of things they're going to say. And here are some of the red flags that I would encourage you to pay attention to. If the vet doesn't recommend a culture at the beginning of the breeding season, or if they try to discourage you from running one, that would be a red flag. When you consider that urine infection is the number one reason why mare are not getting in full, it's kind of silly not to go and get that diagnostic done. So that'd be a major red flag. Now, if they do a culture, but they do not do a cytology, that's another red flag because you need both to truly interpret those results correctly. So if there's not both, they're kind of useless. If they don't mention a post-breeding protocol, that'd be another red flag for me because a lot of mare need a little bit of support after breeding in order to get pregnant. And if they don't even mention post-breeding protocol, that tells me there's something missing in their toolkit. Looking at their capacity, a red flag for me would be if they have no staff or very little staff, because if they're a one man or a one woman show, they're basically trying to do everything themselves. And that could be quite difficult. If you have only one mare to breed, that's fine. But if they're truly trying to manage a, a practice on top of breeding multiple mare, something's gonna slip and uh, if it's your mare that means a missed cycle that could mean more money so I would hesitate to use a vet that doesn't have any help at all to do that now it doesn't need to be a vet they could have a vet tech helping them out that's perfectly fine they can do the insemination they can follow protocol that would work for me and finally if they tell you in the middle of summer that your mare has shut down and that uh, she will not be cycling again yeah that'd be a big red flag for me too there's a saying in Canada that we have 10 months of winter and two months of really tough sledding. <laughs> what I mean by that is that there's a season for everything and mares are seasonal breeder. That means they have a peak of fertility around the time where the day are the longest. So what does that mean? That means that if you try to breed your mare too early or too late in the year or in the middle of winter, you're just gonna be spending a lot of money and probably not getting her bread. She might not even be cycling. So when does that peak happen for your region? Well, you need to talk to your expert about that. Talk to your vet about when they think is the peak time, the best time to breed your mare. I know that for us in Canada, north of the 49 parallel, mares are not naturally cycling um, until probably April or May. I see every year people trying to breed their mare too early in the year and they spend countless vet visit and the vet telling them, well, oh, she's transitional. Yeah, well, that's money spent. Yes, there's ways to get them to cycle earlier, but we're talking about keeping costs down here, not increasing them. So the timing of your breeding is important too, if you want to save some money. So if you end up breeding a very fertile stallion, and a clean mare at the right time of the year, using an expert, you're putting all the chances on your side of doing this only once, and that will save you lots of money.